Today, I'll show you how to make this awesome screen shake effect in Scratch. The first thing we need is to make our own sprites, and let's call it screen shake. Let's drag out one green flag click, and we'll make it so that when we press the mouse, we can shake the screen. So let's do forever, wait until mouse down, and then now we need our custom block called screen shake. Let's go to my blocks, and let's make a block, and let's call it shake. And we need some parameters for the shake, so we can specify how much strength we want, how much bounciness we want, and how much frequency, or how fast the bounce is. Now let's press OK. So we're going to need some variables for our bounce. Let's go to the variables category, and let's delete this default variable that Scratch made. Let's make a new one called shake x for all sprites, and shake y for all sprites. And the last variable is called random and make sure to press for the sprite only. Let's set random to pick random 0 to 360. Let's drag out a repeat 10 block and let's set shake x to pick random minus 10 to 10. Let's do the same thing for shake y. Set shake y to pick random minus 10 to 10. Now pressing on this, you'll see that shake y and shake x picks a random value between minus 10 and 10, does it 10 times before it stops. Let's go into our cat sprite, and let me rename this to player. When green flag clicks forever, go to 0, 0, and then change x by screen shake x, and then change y by shake y. So let's go back to our screen shake sprite, and press the block, and you'll see that our cat moves around a little bit. In the beginning of the video, you saw that the shake was pretty smooth. This movement was by using the sine and cosine blocks. Let's make another variable. Let's call it bounce x for this sprite only, and bounce y for this sprite only. Before we do that repeat 10 block, let's set bounce x to sine of our random variable. So let's drag out the abs of, change it to sine of our random block. And then you see we have the strength parameter here. Let's multiply this by bounce x. So sine of random times strength. Now let's right click and duplicate this. Set bounce y to cosine of random times strength. So now we have these bounce x and bounce y variables. What do we do with them? Let me delete these, set shake y and shake x. So I'm gonna drag out my shake block and I'll set the strength equal to 10, 10 and 10. So you'll see bounce x is now eight and bounce y is now minus 4.6. So what we need to do is slowly smooth these values down to zero so we get our shake effect. To do this, we can drag out change bounce x by zero minus bounce x divided by our bounciness parameter. So what that should do, if I drag it in there, and I click on the block, you see it slowly moves down to zero. And the reason it doesn't go further is because I repeat 10. Let's just make it bigger, P50, slowly moves down to zero. And that's what we need. So let's do the same thing with our change bounce Y. So change bounce Y by zero minus bounce Y divided by bounciness. So now both of the variables should be slowly moving down to zero. Okay, so they're moving down to zero. Now we actually need to set our shake X and shake Y variables. Let's drag out set shake X to zero. And what we can do here is multiply sine of bounce X times five. So let's go to operators and we need to multiply this whole sine of bounce y times five, let's multiply it by our frequency variable. So now, whoa, when you click on the block, it just moves off the screen. That's crazy. Let's set our frequency down to five, maybe like 50. And there you go. You'll see that we have a little spring effect, but it's not as smooth as the example that we saw. What we need to do is, let me rearrange these blocks. We want to introduce some randomness or some camera shake. So what we can do is drag out sine of our timer variable. That's just the timer of the game, how long the game has been running. Let's multiply this by our frequency variable, and then we'll multiply everything by bounce x times five. So set shake x to sine of timer times frequency times bounce x times five. The cat starts up at random positions and it slowly moves back to the center. So let's right click, duplicate. Let's change this to shake y cosine of timer times frequency times bounce y. Now our effect looks a lot smoother. So let's let's go here and let's change the frequency to 1000. There goes our nice bounce effect. So we have one last problem to fix. 
and that is this repeat 50. If we reset our bounciness to something like 50, we'll be bouncing for a long long time and our script only repeats 50, so we're going to be stopping in the middle of our screen shake. What we need to do is detect when our screen shake is over. We can do this by using our bounce x variable. Okay, so we need to detect if it's getting close to zero. Problem is, it's either minus or negative. So when we shake, it could be a minus value like you just saw here. So the block that we need is absolute value of bounce x. What that'll do, it'll remove the minus. So you could see bounce x is minus seven, but the absolute value is seven. So let's do absolute value of bounce x is less than, let's put in a small number like 0 0.005. Now we detect if it's getting close to zero and when our bounce is getting less strong. So instead of repeat 50, let's just drag that out. Let's do repeat until absolute value of bounce x is less than 0 0.05. So now let's press that block again and we'll keep on bouncing until bounce x is less than 0 0.005 which is basically the end of the screen shake. There we go. Okay, let me set my bounciness back to 10. Okay, our problem here, we can only screen shake when the other screen shake is done. We can't have multiple screen shakes upon the other. The way we can fix this is by stopping the other shake before we make a new shake. And we can do this broadcast message. Let's make a new message and let's call it screen shake. And instead of the shake, our custom block, let's drag that out. When I receive screen shake, then we do the shake block. Now we need to stop the other screen shakes that have been happening. So let's drag out our stop all block. Let's change it to stop other scripts and the sprites. And let's put this before broadcast screen shake. So now, whenever I press the mouse, it stops the previous shakes and then it starts a new screen shake. And that just looks pretty cool. So when we need to, we can just backpack the script. And now I'm gonna show you how to put it into a project. Okay, so I just found this project randomly on the explore page. Let's go into our backpack and let's drag out our scree shake. I just forgot. Let's go to the first sprite, which is the background. I'm pretty sure it's this one. So let's drag out change X by screen shake X and then change Y by screen shake Y. And that's all the code we need to apply screen shake. And if we want to change how much screen shake, we could just multiply this by 0.5. So screen shake X times 0.5, screen shake Y times 0.5. Let's do that to our trees. In fact, I can just drag the script and copy it onto all of the sprites. Clouds, the moon, and the mountains. So depending on how far the background is, that's how much screen shake we're gonna have. So the background, let me set this to 0.3, 0.3. And then the background, the mountains, that might move a lot less. So let's do 0.2. And then the clouds, that's the final one. Let's just leave it like, let's leave it at 0.1. So there we go, everyone. I showed you how to do a screen shake in Scratch. Thank you for watching and I'll hope to see you in the